Welcome to DMCMY's Midweek Recharge. I'm Ginger Conlon, president of DMCMY, and today we're going to discuss everything you need to know about fractional and on-demand marketers. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to thank DMCMY's annual sponsors, whose generous support makes events such as this possible. So thank you to platinum sponsor Axiom, gold sponsors Wyland, Experian, and Alliant, and bronze sponsors BMI Global OMS, Japs Olson Company, and Epsilon. Also a bit of housekeeping. Um, if you have any technical issues, just go ahead and use the chat. And if you have any questions for us um, during the presentation, you can ask them at any time using the Q&A tab. I'll keep an eye out um, during as well as after uh, the the conversation so that we can have Q&A as it fits in, the, in, in the, the, the moment of the event today. And, um, you know, the work environment is changing and companies and professionals are rethinking fractional and on-demand work. And so I was excited to um, have two industry rock stars joining us today to discuss this. Kathy Hawley, who is a co-founder of Bolster, who spent 11 years at Return Path, five years at Epsilon, she was at DoubleClick, so she's been around the, the, the industry for quite a while. And also Shannon Denton, who is co-founder of Ripple, who you'll recall was the longtime president and global, and then global CEO of Razorfish. Um, Matt Blumberg, who is co-founder and CEO of Bolster, was unable to join us today. You'll probably recognize him as a longtime chairman and CEO of Return Path. So, um, you know, we've got a great conversation planned today to talk about the opportunities, challenges, and realities of hiring and serving as fractional and on-demand marketing professionals. So welcome, Kathy and Shannon. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. Um, you know, to set the, the, the tone for the conversation um, and really give everyone some context, maybe you could each give us the kind of elevator pitch about your background and about your company so, you, so everyone can see kind of the two sides of the market that you're coming from. So Kathy, why don't you kick us off? Sure. Yeah, so um, I have been in the HR space for most of my career. Um, as Ginger said, at Return Path uh, for the last 11 years, I was uh, the chief people officer for the last few years. And the, over the last year, I've also been a fractional chief people officer, which has given me a little experience towards our newest venture, um, which is Bolster. Um, so on the Bolster side, um, a group of executives from Return Path decided they really wanted to work together again. And we explored different ways. Um, we were really passionate about people and culture and building a great culture as well as building a great uh, business. Um, so as we explored what op opportunities there were in that space, we connected with um, High Alpha and Silicon Valley Bank, who had um, built a business plan around this idea of a marketplace for on-demand executives to connect with um, startups and scale-ups who needed on-demand talent. Um, and then we're also doing some work around um, helping executives to uh, evaluate their executive team and their board and kind of benchmark those against other companies so that they can figure out when they need to bolster their um, their teams with either um, like a fractional executive or maybe uh, um, an interim or a coach um, or even a board member. So that's where we are. Excellent. All right. Shannon. Yeah. So um, as you said, I spent um, a long time at Razorfish, so actually 15 years in my career. And um, I have two co-founders, and they also both uh, came from Razorfish, so Ray and Bonnie. And um, we, you know, our time at Razorfish, towards the end of that tenure, we started to see the opportunity with on-demand talent. And so we were hearing our clients talk about, hey, we need people faster, we need people more cost-effectively, and we need experts, and we want them, um, you know, for a project and to get things done quickly, and then maybe to move on to other resource needs um, later. And so we kind of conceived the idea of Ripple uh, about 18 to 20 months ago and have built a software platform that we call, it's an agency services platform. And our clients include brands, agencies, consultancies, 
and you can go out there and basically find teams of people to do project work um, for over 50 different types of projects. So be it from a website you want redesigned, a social campaign, um, you know, you name the different type of marketing or customer experience initiative. We've got teams of people that can do that um, uh, for you um, very cost effectively and very quickly. And it was a great fit for me. I actually have a computer science degree. So I started off my career writing a lot of software. So I kind of saw the ripple opportunity as taking my computer software background and merging it with all my time at Razorfish and bringing those two together. So it's been a great, um, exciting opportunity for me to pursue the past 18 months. Fantastic. So let's start by looking at the opportunity from the perspective of a company looking to hire either a fractional executive or an on-demand marketer or marketing team. Um, you know, these things are, are nothing new, but I also feel like a lot has changed in the market that's opened the door for a lot more interest in these areas. So from your perspective, um, what are you seeing that's changed the inc or that's increased the use of fractional executives and on-demand marketers and marketing teams? Shannon? Yeah, I think from, from our, what we offer, uh, the changes started happening, as I mentioned, even the past eight to 10 years. So marketing um, evolved to be more about rapid experiments. It got more data and platform driven. Um, it, it, it was no longer about the Mad Men era of, you know, these long campaigns, these huge brand programs. I mean, that's still very important, but a lot of the work got to be, it was really fast paced, quick work with experts that needed to come in and do things. And so that started to happen. Um, and then even the last, obviously with the pandemic and everything, the acceleration of sort of wanting sort of this and comfort with on-demand remote talent and being, being able to plug into people no matter where they are, um, companies are getting even more comfortable with that. So, you know, we always talk about it start, it's been happening for 10 years um, based upon the changes in marketing. Um, and now with the pandemic and really everyone, you know, really wanting to be probably a little bit, they're a little bit more risk averse about hiring full time. And so how can they tap into this on demand talent, get things done and only pay for people when they need them, not when the person doesn't have anything to do. So I think that's something that we see happening more and more over the upcoming years. Right, right. And Kathy, from your perspective, what are you seeing? You know, exactly the same thing. And I'd say we're also seeing that kind of gig economy is moving upstream into more executive roles. Um, so I totally agree with everything Shannon just said, like the pandemic has really helped people think differently about work. Um, that's not that it's helped, you know, not that it's helped many people, but it, it really helps us think differently about work. Um, there's more available talent right now. So, um, and then exactly what um, Shannon said about budgets and people needing to be a more, little more lean with their, um, with their money and, being, and thinking creatively about how can they get the talent without paying for a full-time person. Right. So, so I'm hearing that, that um, budget and agility are two of the benefits. Um, what else are some of the benefits of working in this kind of approach? Kathy, what are you seeing? Yeah, I think you can get more senior experience talent than you could afford if you were, buy, if you were getting a full-time person. Uh, so you can meet, you, you can get a real expert for what you need at the moment. Um, it's easier to ramp them up and down depending on your needs. I mean, usually if you hire a fractional, you might hire them for, you know, 60% of the time. And then if your business starts to accelerate, you can grow that a little bit. Um, you could also reduce it. And so you have, um, you have the ability then to be a little more flexible. Um, and then I think the, the other kind of benefit of it is that you're really helping the leveling, leveling up the existing team uh, without making long, long-term full-time commitments. Right, right. How about in your uh, part of the market, Shannon? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll echo, I agree with everything Kathy said. I'll also just say in our space, transparency has historically been a challenge. And so using a, we're, we're a platform, we're a software company and, and built on a marketplace model. And so using our platform, you can go out there and compare teams, you get real-time pricing. Um, you know exactly what things are gonna cost immediately. Um, and you can compare side by side these skills on this team versus this team. And so historically, I would say talent 
sourcing and marketing services has been, you know, you go to RFPs to different agencies, maybe you go to staffing firms. It's, it's, it's a little bit archaic and it takes a long time and it's not transparent. And so I think that's one thing that we're, we're adding a lot of value in terms of transparency. Right. So in your, in your case, um, are you seeing, have you seen the comfort level of clients change as they get used to working with on-demand teams? Yeah, for sure. And I, well, I think there's two, if you think of two things, really, it's the on-demand teams. And then again, we're actually providing a software solution where essentially it's, uh, you know, you can shop or find teams on your own as, as much self-service as you want. We are always talk to you on the phone or we can chat, but you can essentially, you know, go out there and, and, and use our software to sort of say, these, these are the projects, this is my project and you can, we will match you to teams. And so just the newness comes about with comfort with on demand, but also comfort with using a software tool, um, which we all do in the consumers, in, in, our, in our phones, in the consumer space. But that's sort of what we're educating around is that this on demand thing, you can actually get teams of people. A lot of people understand that you can get an individual freelancer, but the fact that we have these ready-made teams is very unique. And then the fact that you can use a software platform to do it, you know, kind of like, you know, um, ob an obvious comparison, but like an Uber or something like that, where you can actually use software to go find marketing teams to help you with your projects. It's a very different concept. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, what about concerns? Any concerns that you typically hear or any challenge that challenges that any that you've hear you've heard people facing in, in terms of this, Kathy, what, what about in your area? I think the hardest thing is for a CEO to get their head around um, taking a full-time role and making it fractional. Even if they know they don't need a full-time person in that role because they're not big enough, it's hard for them to see that a fractional person could be as committed or um, as, as strong as a full-time person. Um, and then um, that's probably the biggest concern. Um, and if you haven't really experienced it before, it's hard to envision. But those of us who have experienced it, totally get it and see that it's totally possible and it's a good experience on both sides. Right, right. And Shannon, in your space? Yeah, again, something unique that to us, the most common question or one of the top three questions we get is, so I go get a team on the Ripple platform to do a project, you know, has, has this team worked together? You know, is this, they, what about the chemistry aspect? And so, one of the things that was interesting that we discovered when we were creating Ripple was um, over half of freelancers typically already work as teams, even though they're independent freelancers. Uh, a designer will often work with a developer, will often work with a copywriter and so on. And so we're actually empowering them to go ahead and formalize that relationship on our platform. And so initially, you know, the, the concern is um, in some cases, you know, have these people work together. You know, we like the fact that people can speak the same language and they have chemistry. And so we were pleased to find out that there was that insight that we could just really facilitate something that was already happening offline. So. Right. Right. That's great. So any, any misconceptions in the industry that you've come across when you're talking to people or, you know, if you're being interviewed or that kind of thing? Uh, misconceptions. Um, I guess, um, and Kathy touched on this earlier, I think that there's not always the case that the clients know that how strong the talent is in the, in the gig economy and the freelance market. Our average years of experience of our freelancers on our platform is, is over 12 years of experience. And there's a lot of ex top agency people that have chosen to be a freelancer because they like it. They like the flexibility, they like the variety, um, you know, they don't want to work necessarily for a big company. And so just, it's just amazing the talent that's out there. And, and again, with the fact that it's a marketplace model and we don't have all the overhead, you can get, you know, a lot more seasoned talent for even a lower price point than you can in other places. And so I think that's something that just, you know, the, the amount of the, the caliber of the talent is, is sometimes a misconception. Right. Interesting. And Kathy, how about for you? Yeah, I just add on to that and I'm ditto that um in addition to um uh in addition to that i think there's a there's a perception that a person who'd worked at a really large company before wouldn't be interested in a startup and scale up so most of our um, clients are startups and scale ups 
And we're finding that executives are really passionate. They actually want to leave the larger company and go back to maybe their roots or um, take things they've learned and apply it to a smaller, a smaller place. So, um, so that's definitely one as well. Right. So if, if you were talking to someone who was interested in hiring fractional or on demand, what would be your number one piece of advice that you would give them? Shannon? Um, well, I think we always encourage them to, um, you know, start with a pilot project. Um, and so just to get comfortable with it. And so we, and that's typically how we've started all of our client relationships is to pick a project, you know, that, um, generally for us, we like, we like projects in sort of the two to eight week timeline. Um, and we're all about lean teams. So a project that you want to get done quickly that, um, you know, is something that um, you could see yourself using on-demand talent for. So I think just starting with a pilot um, is important. Um, but I think just, you know, it's just, it's, um, as we talked about up front, really it is, I think, a new way to work. And I think the benefits are there clearly. And so I think it's more, more than often than not, it's just getting comfortable. Um, it's just a little bit different way of engaging teams and people to do things, so. Absolutely, and Kathy? Yeah, it's interesting that we haven't spoken before today, but um, we're seeing the same thing. If we can start with a project, you don't need to go through a six month interview process like you might for an executive. Start with a project, see if it works out for them. If it does, move them into a fractional role. Um, and then also once they're in a fractional role for an executive team, really treat them like members of the full team and not like second class citizens. Because if you want someone who's really engaged in your business, treating them as if they should be engaged in your business and part of the team is really important. Oh, absolutely. Um, so thanks. So let, now let's take a look uh, at the, from the other perspective. And, you know, uh, say I'm somebody who wants to uh, work as a, as a fractional executive or, you know, I know a couple of people that we work together and we want to be an on-demand team. Um, are you seeing... A num an increase in the number of people interested in serving as these roles? And, you know, if so, what do you think um, are, I mean, we talked a little bit about some of the reasons, but, you know, any other reasons why you're, you're seeing this, uh, you know, as the market evolves? Um, Kathy? Um, yeah, I think, like you said, some of the same reasons that companies want it, the gig economy, the pandemic, um, maybe people are losing their jobs and trying to think of, like, if they can't find a full-time job, might they think about doing something else? Um, and then some people just need the flexibility right now to not work full time. You have small kids at home, you're trying to homeschool them. Um, and then I just think there is more opportunity because there's more openness to this. So I think a lot of people might've done it in the past if there have been opportunities. And now, you know, there's marketplaces like both of ours that, um, that help people find, find the opportunities. So I think that that's another reason people are moving that direction. Right, and Shannon? Yeah, I would just, agree with all that. I just said there's also a cultural, I believe a cultural shift. There's a blend of family, work, life. And uh, I think, you know, freelancing and is, is appealing from the perspective of, again, managing your own time a little bit more. Um, it's a marketplace. You can turn down projects you don't want. If you're at an agency, it's, it's kind of difficult to say, hey, I don't want to do that. And so I think you get, you get a lot of flexibility and, um, and with the new marketplaces and tools out there exactly i mean you can create we can help you create enough demand to where you feel better about the security aspect and you feel better about the income future income and so it kind of gives you that plus um you know the flexibility and kind of your own boss so i think that's you know that's a big the cultural aspect i think is super important so right yeah definitely and so you've you've both mentioned some some of the bigger benefits and talking about the, you know, why the, the growing interest, any other benefits that you see, um, you know, in terms of like kind of putting your toe in the water culturally um, with the company, Kathy, in, in, in um, you know, in your case, anything that you're seeing other, other reasons? Um, yeah. And I, I think that Shannon touched on this is you can, um, you can select the type of work you want to do. Um, especially in a, a good market, but if you are really, really good at one aspect, um, like I'm, I'm particularly passionate about culture and diversity and equity and inclusion. So I could do work that's focused on that rather than doing all the work around that um, that I might need to do on a in a in a full time role. 
So I think you can um, focus a little more on the sweet spot, on your own sweet spot and have a broader impact. Right, yeah. And Shannon, for you? Yeah, I mean, the other things that these, the you know, like if you look at our platform, what it provides, um, we, we often talk about it as an operating system for the freelancer. And so we handle all of their, their um, payment, their collections, and so they can sort of manage their upcoming invoices. Um, you know, they we handle negotiation on rate, and so a lot of a lot of the freelancers may not want to get into um, the operational side or the business development. And so I think there's a benefit of partnering with with a company like Ripple in terms of just taking a lot of the burden off the plate, and so you can focus in on what you really like to do. And so that's that's a, a lot of the benefit of working with these. Uh, marketplaces and platforms uh, for this type of stuff as well. Right. Yeah, makes sense. So um, similar to my question before, any any concerns that you t typically hear from people who are, you know, are working as or want to work as on-demand fractional talent? Shannon? Yeah, I mean, I think the it's the obvious stuff. I mean, I, I think just, you know, there, there's sort of these lifetime or not lifetime, but they've been freelancers, independents. They're comfortable with the, I guess, the risk of not having jobs lined up constantly. So there's going to be a certain, if you're new to that, there's going to be a certain fear of, you know, am I going to have enough visibility to my to projects and, re and my income is one thing. And then I think also, you know, we're not, we don't hire people full time, so we don't offer benefits. And so I think, you know, being realistic, those two are the biggest issues, biggest barriers to freelancing in our space. Um, and so, you know, we certainly can connect people to benefits. And as we already talked about, our goal is to keep people busy with jobs. But those are the those are going to be the concerns people have, um, you know, and, and they're going to play multiple channels. I mean, being realistic here. I mean, if I'm if I'm a freelancer, you know, Ripple is one place I'm going to look, but I'm also going to do my own networking and I'm going to do some other things too to find work. Um, and so we'd love to be the only channel. Maybe that'll be the case in a year or two, but right now, obviously there's, there's other ways as well. So. Right. Right. And I guess having working with a company like Ripple helps take out some of the, you know, I'm an art director, not a salesperson situation. No doubt. That's huge. Um, like I said, it, yeah, do, most, most of the, um, freelancers in our, in our platform do not want to be salesperson and they also don't that a lot of them don't like to negotiate dollars and stuff like that so we can kind of take that off their plate um, and they don't like collecting invoices so that's that's when you someone asked me the value those are the three very simply simply put value propositions get them work you know collect their pay, get them paid um, and you know we'll, we'll advocate for the rate on behalf of, of what you know their talent and so those are three pretty valuable things and it's in the, amongst themselves that we do so yeah, absolutely. That's it's funny because that reminds me of, of I've worked with a lot of freelancers over the years in my editorial roles, and it's always funny when you have to chase someone down to get them to send you your invoice, their invoice. Like, Come on, people, we we yeah. we want to get you paid. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> I'm going to that, yeah. So, yeah. Kathy, how about in your space? Yeah, I, ours are exactly the same, and I think that I, the one I'd probably add is that they that executives want to have a community of people that. Um, that do work similar to theirs. So um, they can, you know, obviously connect to organizations like yours, or um, at some point we're gonna provide some community as well. So people can talk to people who do the same type of work that they do. But yeah, the other two are the things that we hear most often. I don't want to, I don't want to have to be a salesperson and I don't want to remain in business and do all the back end work. Right. Yeah, makes sense. Um, any misconceptions from from the, you know, the, the talent side, Kathy? Yeah, I'm not sure I see many misconceptions from, from, from their side. Um, you know, maybe, maybe from the employer side that the executive is unemployed, so they're unemployable, but I, I haven't really seen that yet. Yeah, yeah. And Shannon, in, in your case? Yeah, I'm trying to think from a talent um, misconceptions. I, I think... Um, the only, so this is an interesting dynamic. The only thing I've seen that we have to, we have to advise them on is sometimes you will get um, some 
freelancers who are fresh out of working at a big agency or consultancy and they kind of know what their rate was there and they think they they want to kind of get the same rate and they want to charge a lot and and so they, they they price themselves a little bit out of the market and so what we do is we when they sign up for ripple based on the roles they say they want to play we give them advice on the market and so try to help them and that's the only thing i've seen is that you know part of the part of the value prop of of you know why they can get more work is if they're a little bit lower price point than going to a big agency or consultancy as a freelancer and so that's some of what we see with some of the less experienced ones that we kind of have to educate and and um in terms of the price point that they can expect to get so right so that's interesting now for either for either of you in terms of from both from either side either the hiring side or the talent side do you see any um you know, not seeing eye to eye in terms of either scope creep or expected hours for certain rate or, you know, think those kind of things where you, you hear about generally, have you been finding that, that as well at all? Or is it because of the way you work, uh, take some of the, some of that issue out of the equation? Um, I, it, you know, I mean, having, worked forever my career in services i mean it's it's not dissimilar yeah i mean you you know we um obviously we we have tools that help that so when you go out and you pick a project on ripple we actually ask scoping questions and we we generate automatically a project brief and a scoping document that comes out of the interaction with our software and so we're trying to narrow the gap and manage expectations on both sides um, but you know, it is services and it is, you know, it's, and so you're going to run into situations where there's going to be some, Hey, you know, we thought we were going to get this and, you know, are you willing to do that? And so it happens, um, on our platform, if you, if you want a single point of contact for a team, you can actually, um, select what we call an engagement lead. And that person will sort of be the single point of contact and they'll manage all of these sort of. Um, interaction with all of the team members for you. And so that can help on the client side alleviate some of that. But we have a variety. I mean, we have fixed price projects. We have time and materials, hourly rates. So we have both types. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's just the nature of the gig. There's going to be, you know, some of that stuff that happens. So. Right, right. And Kathy, are you seeing that at all or? Um, a little bit. I think that at the executive level, it's and it's probably similar, but you, it's, it requires really good communication skills and really good expectation setting up front. So we have some tools that help people think about, think through the conversations from both the CEO and an executive perspective um, to make sure they're having those conversations up front. No surprises, um, but it definitely, it's still a conversation for sure. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, so in terms of now you're in the elevator with somebody who's, you know, looking to be on demand or fractional executive. What's your one piece of advice for them to get them started on that path? Or if, or if they've been on the path and are trying to improve their results, what, what would you say, um, Kathy? Um, I would say be really thoughtful and, and intentional about what you want to do and about your time. So managing your time really effectively um, because things can expand in in scope and if you if you have a set number of hours in a day and really managing that time really effectively is, is super important yeah yeah Shannon yeah I mean I, I think it's uh, for us it's it's really knowing how to market yourself and and not at a macro level but you know um, when people are looking for talent today, they're drilling into skills, they're drilling into experience, they're drilling into what types of projects you've done. And so the people that do the best on our platform take the time. So you can go out on our platform and create your own, you know, digital resume, so to speak, of your skill, your skills, your, your, the types of projects you've worked on. Um, you can, your work history. And the, the people that do the best job and really care and, and really take care of their portfolios and their profiles are the ones that are going to surface up to the top on these software platforms. And so I think that it's a different, little bit of a different mindset if you haven't been doing that. But I think that's, you have to treat all of your sort of background and your skill and your experience very carefully and be intentional about how you manage that. And if you yeah. can 
and, and in addition, I agree on the networking and how you spend your time. If you can do those two things well, then I think, you know, in today's world, you're going to be able to find some, find some jobs. So. Right. Do, do either of you um, or your, your organizations go back around to the folks who want to work with you and say, um, you need to update that LinkedIn profile too. <laughs> you know, get a picture that's not hugging somebody. We have more, we have more, um, we try to get people to update their bolster profile because um, exactly what Shannon says, maybe your LinkedIn profile shows the, like the high level jobs you've done. We want you to show your skills, your projects, and what's kind of unique about you and what you can do, what, what your sweet spots are. Um, which right. is a little bit different, um, a different view of you than, than LinkedIn. But yes, there's definitely that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely have to be proactive. And um, the, other, the other dimension for us, because we're, we're teams and we're project-based, is we ask our people on our platform to keep their availability calendar. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like Airbnb. So they need to tell us, um, it's pretty simple. So they just need to tell us over the next 12 weeks how many hours a week they have each week. But it's very important to us because we're very client centric and we don't want to serve up people or clients that aren't available or are falsely available. And that's, that's a major challenge yeah. with the initial talent platforms like a Fiverr or Upwork that are out there. And so we're pretty focused on that. And so, you know, we do have proactive reach out to all of our talent, both in terms of updating your profile, keeping your availability up to date and, and things like that, so. Yeah, that sounds important. Yeah. Um, so we have a question from Todd. It's a little long, so I'm going to read it and uh, bear with me. So clearly a non-employee um, cannot bind the entity he's he or she is temporarily engaged with. More subtle is the issue of representation, how the fractional person's relationship with the firm is described to outsiders. For example, most companies contract with their clients preclude non-employees from working for the client without written permission. So how are the legal or quasi-legal issues, issues handled in a fractional environment? Um, Kathy, how, how are you working with the legal issues? Um, yeah, so, so those haven't really come up for us. So we've, um, generally speaking, I'd say you're a fractional chief people officer or chief um, you know, C-level CXO can be called that on your website, on materials, those kind of things. Sometimes the, um, sometimes the person actually is an employee and not a consultant, depending on the state and the legalities um, that are required in that state. Um, so we haven't seen that, seen that to be an issue uh, so far. Right, and Shannon, for, for your... Um, yeah, so we, um, yep, so we, we have independent contractor agreements with everyone that works on a Ripple project um, on the talent side. And then we have a master agreement with all of our customers or clients on the client side. And so pretty well buttoned up. I mean, we're, we, um, in terms of, you know, gig economy and making sure that, I mean, we're a marketplace. And so the talent has full um, option to set their own rates based upon the market. They, have, they can turn down jobs um, and, you know, they, they're the experts. And so we kind of follow, we've got about uh, a nine, nine specific guidelines we follow on how we interact with talent and, to, and they're non employees. Um, and we have all the documentation sort of, you know, buttoned up to tie from client all the way back to talent. And in terms of, you know, we pat a lot of the client MSAs, that language gets passed into the independent contractor agreements because when you do a project, then sometimes we have to customize that ICA for that specific client. And so there's a lot of details in there, but um, you know, we definitely got that all set up um, and it's all pretty much automated on our platform. When you get a job, invited to a job as a talent person, you will see the project brief and then you will be served up at an independent contractor agreement to make sure you're comfortable with the terms of that particular job, so. Right, makes sense. Um, so follow on question, how do your respective firms different from advisory cloud or, you know, really other um, services in the market? Uh, Shannon, for you? Um, well, I don't, I mean, I, there's not really a, another agency services platform that's doing what we're doing. So again, I think if you look at um, 
the market, then, you know, certainly Upwork is pretty well known of doing individual freelancers, a lot in the tech space. And then Fiverr is well known for working with small businesses and more very tactical jobs, been very successful. But if you look at what we're doing, we, we, we're taking mostly X um, agency, top people from agencies that work in teams and we're working with um, upper mid market and enterprise companies to hire in teams through us, our software platform. So it's really, there's really not anybody doing that. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, so that's, we, we think we have a very differentiated offering in the market. Right. And Kathy, it seems you do too as well. Yeah, we, um, our, our differentiation is that we are across all executive functions and, um, and for, all except full-time executive roles. Um, so, so yeah, that's the, that's the differentiator there. Right. Um, so, uh, oh, this is interesting. So the NDAs with gig staff um, ex extend beyond the project, I would assume they do. Yeah, um, there's standard yeah. terms, um, beyond standard terms of regardless of project, and then there's an attachment that, that gets added for the project. So it's, yeah, so it's a, basically an addendum for every project to the standard independent contractor agreement. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And Kathy, I imagine the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the question, Ken. Um, well, great. Well, thanks so much for all the information. It was really interesting. Um, I really got a, a, I got a better handle on, on the market. Uh, hopefully, all of our of our attendees today did as well. Um, so Kathy and Shannon, thank you so much for participating today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate thank you having us. Appreciate it. And um, I want to thank everyone who joined us today. Uh, just a quick reminder, we'll have um, cookies and cocktails event on Wednesday, October 1st. So grab your, you know, Prosecco and Malamars. That's what I'll be having. Um, to talk about this, we'll be talking about the state of cookies, and um, then in November, we've got our 2020 twist on the silver apples. Uh, we won't be having the awards this year because we really want to save that for the stage, so we will be talking to some of the past honorees about their defining career moments, so I'm really excited for that. We've got a great lineup, and um, then we've got the spooky, scary but actually kind of related to this, but um, talking about helping people just entering the industry to find a job. Um, we have this spooky, scary job search uh, a little bit later this month as well. So all of that's on the event page on the website. Thanks again, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Ginger. Bye-bye. Thank you.